Bang! Needs knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife Kara is busy and this video is all about action. First we're going to start off with the flipper tabs on this wee kite fin. Now if you look you'll see this has a flat spot up top here and then another flat spot back here going towards the pivot. One's made for a light switch, the other one is made for the push button. Now all of this action is going to be based around the detent. What is the detent? The detent is what holds the blade in and creates the tension for you to overcome for it to shoot out. In this case the detent ball is right there and you can see it if we zoom in. Bam! That little ball above my finger right there. Also very similar to the last one on this wee vapor, a flat spot back here that kind of cants down a little bit and then a flat spot going towards the pivot. Same thing, light switch, push button. What is a light switch and a push button? Let me show you on this Kaiser Lieb. So the push button is where you take the, the spot on the flipper tab and push it towards the pivot. And it's like pushing a button. Light switch is kind of like flipping a light switch on a wall. You just put your finger right on top and yank down. With any of these, like the Quest Custom Gent, you have to overcome the detent by creating tension. Put your finger on it. You don't want to break the detent because then it'll flip out. You just push tension on it. Then once you have enough tension on it where it's almost about to fly out, then you go forward and follow through by pushing all the tension, whether it's the push button or the light switch. Then you're going to have a little bit more like this where you have the flat spot, but then the flat spot going towards the pivot is going kind of upward. So you can't use that. So what do you do? You use the corner of it. You kind of do a light switch, a uh, light switch, push button mix. Bang! Works really good. Now you'll also have some flipper tabs like this that are made for both and kind of just do like a teardrop effect where the jipping goes all the way around. Those are good for just about any way you can use it. Amazing, amazing. Here's another one very similar. You see how the jipping goes all the way around? Same concept. You can use it anyway, but you're going to have specific ones that are specifically for the light switch. They just have jumping on top. No way to push it from the back. You just hook it and you pull down. These are light switch only knives. Or like this. Oh, this was the drop Terzola knife. And then this is the Tucson Bronc. And this is very similar. Now, sometimes these knives, you'll be able to do a push button if you really want. It's just it's not as comfortable as doing the light switch. Also very similar to the QSP Pelican. Same thing. It's a light switcher where you pull it down. Then you'll have the ones that are specifically push button versions where it only has the spot in the back to push. Now, can you light switch it? Well, yeah, if the jimping grabs your finger enough, you can, and a lot of times it will work just fine, but it's mostly meant for the push button. Then there's the, the ones like this, and this was the Ferrum Forge Prolic. Then we have the Alien Knives DX2, which you can light switch, and you can push button, but it works better to just kind of do a little bit of a mixture and do the light switch push button combo. Now let's talk about another only a light switcher. Why is this one only a light switcher? Well, because if you try to push button, the blade will stop because it has so many forms of action from reverse flicking to top flipping to actually the flipper that it will get in the way if you go to try to do the push button. So what you do is you use the jimping, you pull straight down and bang, works just fine. Then you'll have ones like the Buck Marksman that are not on a regular detent system like all the knives we've been showing, it's using a strap as the detent system. So you kind of got to overcome it. It's very, very smooth. So the detent is extremely light in a lot of ways. So you can do a push button or a light switch, but you want to make sure you go all the way through with it. And it's very, very easy to do. Then you'll have the micro flipper tabs, the ones that are so minimal, so tiny. How do you use them? Well, some of them or most of them are used for a kind of a light switch 
bang because you don't really have too much room to do a push button but you still can just depends on that whole detent thing we were talking about then you got flipper tabs like this that allow you to do a light switch or a mixture but not just a regular push button the push button and this is kind of a mixture it's not really just all straight push button and you can still light switch it. Thumb studs, thumb stud action. Let's talk about thumb stud action. So thumb stud action is about the placement of the thumb stud. Usually when it has thumb studs and a flipper tap, usually it's got a pretty well-tuned detent. Usually, not always. So you wanna make sure you can get well placement onto the thumb stud. Otherwise it's just uncomfortable to use. And there's a couple ways to do it. You can, you basically wanna act like you're flicking a marble. So you can flick it up or you can flick it out. Now, when you do the reverse flick, you don't wanna go straight up or straight out. You kinda of do like a, a mixture right to the side. Now, there are gonna be some where you're gonna to have to go up closer towards the ceiling than out, but it just depends on the thumb stud. But a well-placed thumb stud with a good amount of grip grips your finger, gives you good placement, and bang, you overcome the detent. Now you're gonna have some that are nice and close to the scales like this. You wanna go basically right on top of them or right underneath them. So you can go right on top of them as long as they have enough grip and basically do the same thing. When you do the reverse flick, you go right up underneath and flick out. Another example of one with a well-fined detent, the Civivi Pintail, where you have good placement for the thumb studs, for the reverse flick, or the thumb flick. You can kind of flick it out any way you want to because the detent is so finely tuned. Then you got the SoCom Elite here, which kind of gives you a little track to put your finger on, and you put your finger, follow the track right to the side of the thumb stud and then you overcome it but once you overcome that detent you want to make sure you flick out overcome flick out and it'll basically take over itself very easy to do some people like to go straight up with it but a lot of knives are made to be deployed pretty much a certain way but you can do it however you want Reverse flick pretty much the same way. Follow the trail, same way I would do with my thumb, except for the opposite way with my middle finger. Then you got big old bruisers like the Hinder XM24. Same deal. You got a little spot right here for your thumb to go in. Grip that thumb stud and overcome the detent and let it rock it out. Now, if you add a little pressure by flicking your finger, it kicks out even harder. A lot of times you'll see people do a little wrist flick that kind of add to the, the bang of it. But you don't need to if you got strong thumbs and you can reverse flick. Bang. Now when it's all thumb stud action, no flipper tab, usually the detents are going to be a little lighter because they want a lighter slow roll. So it just depends on the knife. And this is the Civivi Picaro. Amazing action once it breaks in on Foster Bronze. Then you have a Hinder XM18 3 inch that is an only thumb stud, no flipper tab. So this one's gonna have a lot lighter detent than the one with a flipper tab. Then you got knives like this, like, whoo, the Harsey Folder. The Spartan Harsey Folder, which is on Phosphor Bronze and lots of jimping on the thumb stud. Basically, same thing. You kind of shift your hand down. So you're basically like pulling down with this side while this side of your hand goes up, kind of like, like this. So you're gripping and you hold that thumb nice in place and kind of pull down with the other side of your hand and bang and you kind of flick your thumb at the same time. Awesome. Thumb studs on bearings are usually very easy to use because the detents not only are usually pretty tuned pretty good for the thumb stud action, but once they break the detent, it usually takes over. So you're not gonna have to add as much snap to it. You can basically just break the detent with a little flick of the thumb. Very satisfying. Reverse flick, same thing. 
Now let's talk about reverse flicking holes like the Spyderco. This one is the Spyderco Para 3 Lightweight. And you lay in your hand, cover it with your thumb, middle finger in the hole, flick. Same concept, you wanna do it like you're flicking a marble. Now you can also grip it like this where you're gripping all your fingers kinda of on the, the clip and the scale itself. Put your thumb in, create tension, build tension. So it's like I'm getting ready to flick a marble but I haven't flicked it yet, then bang. Once, it, once you break that detent, you got to keep going. Then we have the pair two, same concept. Now, some people you'll see will hold it like this, where they got it gripped all the way around. They use their middle finger. That's okay. You can do that. But a lot of times you got to watch out for this finger up here because you'll hit it like that. So you want to make sure that finger stays out of the way, either straight up or tucked in. Thumb flick, same thing, keep the fingers out of the way. Very, very easy. We have the Spyderco Manix 2, which is basically the same concept. Grip it, thumb, all four fingers gripping it, kind of gripping the uh, clip too. Out. Or if you're going to do the reverse flick, you can go all out, make it look like you're doing a gang sign, and bang. Or you can tuck your fingers all in, just keep your fingers out of the way, and bang. Then you'll have other knives like this Williamson Red E that is a little, little more unique because of where it's placed. You have this little spot right here when you go try to go up. My finger hits right there so i hit it from the bottom of it and i gotta kind of uh, do a little flick but you gotta keep your fingers out of the way and stop your finger from hitting this little corner right there which can be annoying but once you get it down it's not a problem now let's go back to one of those flipper knives like this where you can reverse flick the hole. Now with these, you wanna kinda of get them down low because all the leverage up here, you can use it if you're strong, but if, you, if it has a strong detent, then go a little bit lower on the hole. These are a little bit smaller and compact. This is the Ferrum Forge Prolic, Prolic, Prolic. But you just want to kind of get it lower and use the fat of your finger instead of your nail. You can use your nail, but I like to just use the fat on my finger, and that works pretty good. Then you have holes like this that you basically are all thumb, but you can. This is a spider coat slush boo. You can use this little hole back here, but like the prowl just a second ago, use the meat of your finger, not the nail. With the thumb, it's not a big deal because it's plenty of room. But you can also use your left hand if you're lefty and you got plenty of room. But if you're trying to use your thumb with the left, and eh, not so much. But you can reverse flick it with the right. You just got to smash that meat in there. Smash the meat. Now, little knives like the Dragonfly, they have a back lock. These are a little different. You want to put all the tension going straight up and back. None going this way. If you go this way, it just wah, wah. So what you do is you create tension. Put your thumb in there. Create tension pushing straight up. Actually, it's kind of going this way. And so you push going this way with your thumb. And then you slowly like kind of push the pressure this way, this way, this way. Till you go right there. And then release. And it will fly out. Same thing with the reverse flick. I'm kind of pushing my pressure this way. And then I slowly drive it straight up and release one more and then we'll talk about front flippers so now these ones are like knives like the kubi uh, vagrant you're going to have to be able to smash your finger in either one you can use your nail which isn't too much of an issue for me but if it is then use your fat let your nail sit over the top of the hole not inside the hole and with the thumb you kind of just smash your thumb in there until you feel it about to break and right before it breaks 
you, you fling it up. Then we have front flippers. How do you work a front flipper? Well, you have the jimping on the flipper tab, which points straight up right here. Just let it lay in your hand. You do not want to squeeze it. Do not squeeze it hard. Tension on the top, which you feel like it's going to go like that, right? But you're stopping it because you're going to kind of hook the clip just a little bit, very lightly. And break the detent. So you put tension right here. As soon as it breaks, which is like that, as soon as it breaks that detent, continue your finger. Now you can do the little wrist flick where you just break the detent basically and roll your wrist. But that's not as sad. Eh, sometimes it's satisfying, but it's more satisfying just to grip it very lightly, break the detent, and continue it. Another one is the Concept Goblin. Same concept, just relax, let right in your finger, get your finger to kind of grip that top jimp. The jimping right here, that's jimping right on the top, bang. This one you can do all the reverse flicking, thumb flicking, or top flipping. And sometimes with these, you can flick it like that. Then there's badass top flippers or front flippers like the Olamic Whippersnapper, which basically has a mohawk and you can put your thumb basically on top and just go straight down and it rockets out. Now you can do it like a traditional front flipper as well. But when the front flipping action is so amazing, you have multiple ways you can do it. And with this direction, you just pinch it like this, get your finger right on top. You're gonna to wanna to pinch pretty hard because once it comes out, you're gonna to wanna to get your finger out of the way. Otherwise, you'll just go like that and it'll stop. So you gotta grip it and pull back and get your finger out of the way. Then there's other ways like where you grip it, spin it backwards like that, get your finger on top and pow. Grip it backwards, flip it. So you're spinning it like that, spin it, get it like that, finger like that over the top of your other finger and pow. Then you got very easy ones like the Savivi McKenna. Same concept, grip it in your hand, not very tight. Get your finger right on top and kind of drag it downward. So you can go straight across, but it kind of feels like it's more satisfying to just rest your finger on top and kind of break it down. Break it down. Break the detent and follow through. Just like all of the this action, you gotta follow through. Then when you bring back knives with every single one of them, you got the rub my fault. You got the reverse flick, you got the thumb flick, you got the top flipper, you got the light switcher, you got basically it all in one. Alright guys, I think we've had enough action. I love you guys. Peace.